We're back for the Word of God. Uh, so excited to be able to share with you um, what the Lord has placed upon my heart um, as it relates to this series called Unstoppable. Uh, and, you know, it speaks to the resilience that God has placed in each of us to be able to succeed over adversity and the trouble that may come our way. And, and we, you know, you know, the world is crazy right now. Uh, I was watching the, the fires in California and thinking, you know, how unfortunate and devastating that is for the communities out there. And, you know, uh, just hundreds of thousands of acres burned, households and families burned to the ground. Um, it's just it's just very sad um, when we really have to pray and we have to be mindful of the fact that, um, you know, global warming is a real thing, regardless of what some people say. Uh, you know, we have to be we have to be mindful of that. Today, I really want to encourage you around Hebrews chapter 12. Last week, we went through Hebrews chapter 11 um, and talked about unstoppable. And today I want to focus on Hebrews chapter 12. So I'm just going to read really for you uh, verse one uh, out of the Amplified Bible. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which does so easily and cleverly entangle us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Man, when I was when I was reading this thing, man, it spoke to my heart. I, it was a couple of weeks ago as I was working on this series and I thought I would begin in Hebrews 12. But, but, you know, as I was reading in Hebrews 12, that whole idea of this greater cloud of witnesses jumped out at me. And of course, you know, for those of you who were with us last week, um, you know, we preached out of Hebrews 11 um, and it. it you know, you can't help but read the word and see the intention and the heart of God um, as it relates to, you know, how he is communicating to us to inspire us and encourage us. Now, when I, when I got to Hebrews 12, there's a, a number of things that jumped out at me as it relates to us being unstoppable. But really what I saw here with um, the apostle and the writer of the book of Hebrews is he is giving us now these really practical steps to walk in an unstoppable faith or to walk in an unstoppable way. He gives us these practical steps and I love practicality. I, I feel like I'm a practicality preacher. Like you can take what I say and you can put it into application, you know, almost um, immediately if you choose to do so, if you add faith to it. So let's just look at what he says. He says, therefore, and anytime the therefore is therefore, you got to go back and find out what the therefore is therefore. Um, and if you go back to Hebrews 11, he begins to outline, he outlines all of these heroes of faith, right? Uh, from Abel all the way down. Down. And, and therefore, he says, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses uh, who by faith testify to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, he says, lay aside every weight or in the Amplified, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin that does so easily and cleverly entangle us. So the first thing that jumped out at me is, watch this, we have to remember to look at those who have gone before us. So, you know, the testimony of the saints, as I stated before, is critically important. And as we are building and as we are walking and living out our life, we have to be able to look back and refer back to the heroes of faith. But I'm going to say this. You don't just have to stay in the Bible, right, to reference heroes of faith. You can look in your family. You can look in the community. You can look in your church and watch this. See that there is a cloud of wisdom witnesses uh, who, um, you know, ha have a testimony. And the Bible tells us, the scripture tells us in Revelation, that we overcome them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so there is an overcoming faith that is connected to the testimony of the saints. Watch this. And your own personal testimony. So don't ever, uh, you know, think that, oh, I got to look back thousands of years to find people who were heroes of the faith. You can look down your own spiritual journey, right, to see those who were heroes of faith. One of my personal favorite heroes of faith is my dad, right? Fred Davis, um, the great man of God. Another personal hero of faith, a hero of faith is my mom, right? They, they walked up right before the Lord. My mom still does, right? But they have a legacy that they've left and they've, they've honored the Lord with their life. And we can go to so many others. My grandmother, my grandfather, um, you know, those who walked before the Lord, Elder Jewel Gilbert, 
before he passed away, George Brown, right here in this congregation. So I could go inside of these walls, I could go outside of these walls to realize that there is such a greater cloud of witnesses, those who are alive and those who have gone on to be with the Lord. And this is really powerful. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, those who have walked upright before us. Of course, we can always go to the word of God and, you know, deal with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Elijah, and Isaiah, right? The prophet Micah and, you know, Nehemiah. And we can go to the disciples and the apostle Paul and Peter, right? There's this great cloud that surrounds us that says, listen, if you walk by faith and if you trust God, you need to remember that you are unstoppable. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, watch this. He says, shake off every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Essentially, what he's saying is strip off every unnecessary and weight. So not only do we have to remember, watch this, but we have to strip off sin. We have to strip it off. Why? Because it ultimately weighs us down. And I know for some of you Christians uh, and some of you more seasoned believers, you're like, well, my life is perfect. I don't do anything wrong. Well, that's the sin of pride. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? And so we all have stuff that we can literally take off. We all have issues that we can uh, take off and, and submit to God. By taking them off, I don't mean just like taking off a jacket. I literally mean submitting them to God and saying, Lord, listen, I'm struggling in the area of my anger. I'm struggling in an area of forgiveness. Lord, I'm struggling in the area of addiction. I'm struggling in the area uh, of pride. Whatever that is, right? Because the Bible says that we have to examine our own hearts. We got to check ourselves to see if we're of the faith. And if that is true, then listen, you know better than anybody else your area of weakness. You know better than anybody else, the area that entangles you. Because look at what it says. It says, strip off every um, uh, uh, unnecessary weight and the sin, which does what? So easily entangles you, which means in every life there is an entanglement. Watch this. Uh, you know, that's what Will and Jada tried to call it. That was adultery. Uh, but but the idea is that, right, there, there is sin that will entangle you, which means to get you caught up. And so he says, now, because based on all that God has done for us and based on this great cloud of witnesses, he says, strip off, lay off, throw aside everything that entangles you, everything that so cleverly and easily entangles you. I like to amplify because it says it does it cleverly and it does it easily. So there's some stuff that I call default. And the default sin is that sin sometimes of just coping. I'm stressed, so I got to do this. I'm going through, so I got to do this, right? And this weight um, now it gets on us and it entangles us. Look at what, look at what the scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. He says, no active service, uh, no, no active service gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs, affairs of civilian life. He avoids them so that he may please the one who enlisted him. In other words, he's saying here is that as a soldier of the cross, don't get involved in things that are going to tear you down and tangle you, cause you to get tripped up, cause you to miss the heart of God, right? If you're going to walk in this unstoppable way, you've got to be mindful of those things that do so easily and cleverly entangle you, that, that work on pulling you back, come on, to who you used to be, that work your last nerve to try to get you to fall into a place of sin. He says, not only do you remember what the folks before you did and how they had unshakable, unstoppable faith, but you got to be mindful to check yourself, come on, and make sure that you are of the faith and that you are shaking off every weight in the sin that does so easily uh, beset you. Second Timothy, uh, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world by personal knowledge of the Savior of Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. Their last condition has become worse for them than the first. Essentially what he's saying is that after you've been freed, after you've been delivered, after you've been brought out, after you have escaped the lust of this world through Christ Jesus, and then you get entangled in the world and are overcome, he says your last condition has become worse than the first. And so, in other words, Jesus says, if you sweep a house, you got to keep that house clean because the enemy and the demons that you get out will try to come back seven times worse than they were when you clean the house. And so it's important that we shake off that weight, that we're mindful of it, and that we listen, that we make sure that we give it to the Lord. 
I love what he says here. He says, watch this, because if you don't, if you don't, you will be entangled, right? Uh, and, and you will be caught up and you will be uh, overwhelmed. And we have to make sure that we have to strip off every unnecessary weight, the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with what? Endurance and active persistence, the race that is set before us. Th this, is a, this is a beautiful revelation revelation he says after you shake it off after you strip it off after you throw it off make sure you're running your race make sure you're running the race that God has set before all of us we're all in the race but you have your own personal lane that you're supposed to run in don't worry about what somebody else is doing don't worry about what somebody else's sin or procreate proclivity is. You've got to run your race for you. You are responsible for you. You are responsible not for what other people do, but you're responsible for what you do. It's, it's clear here. He says, not only do we have to remember, not only do we have to shake off the weight and the sin, but we also, listen, have to run our race with patience and we've got to run the race that is set before us. So you've got to know, come on, what your race is and what you're running for. Essentially, you've got to know your why. When you know your why, no devil in hell, come on, can move you off of why you are running your race. Come on, we are running, watch this, for Christ Jesus. We're running for the kingdom. We're doing the work for the kingdom of God. We are all created in Christ Jesus unto good works to be able to fulfill destiny and purpose on our life right? The, the capacity, watch this, capacity to accept and tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry. He says, don't just run your race, but run your race with patience. What is patience? It is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. And I will take it a step further and without allowing that upsetness to control your life. Because the Bible says, listen, you can be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. But understand this, patience says, I'm not going to let my anger control me because of trouble or because of suffering. Remember what I told you about suffering. Sometimes we have to suffer to bring the glory of God out of, out of us. Look at what he says. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In other words, how's your patience? How, how's your ability to control, watch this, uh, your, your emotions when things don't move how you want them to move? That if you're going to really function in an unstoppable way, you've got to let the fruit of the Spirit be uh, uh, present in your life. Watch this. And it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, patience. That patience is critically important. Watch this. If we're going to be uh, unstoppable, if we're going to not allow, come on, the trouble of this world to cause us to get unfocused. If we're not going to allow, come on, the suffering of this, of this world to cause us to get unfocused, you've got to have patience. Watch this. The Bible says that God is what? Long suffering. We've got to long, we've got to learn how to be long suffering with God, knowing that even if it doesn't happen when I want it, how I want it, I've got to trust that, listen, God has got everything under control. There's nothing, come on, that my God can't do. There is nothing too hard for God. And just because it's not moving the way I want it to or happening when I want it to, it doesn't mean that I give up on God. It means that I just hunker down, come on, and get ready for God to do what only God can do. Patience is a gift of the Spirit. Patience is a virtue. Patience is what God desires us to have. Isn't God patient with us? It, isn't, God, it, isn't God gracious with us? And so baked into patience is grace. Baked into patience is the grace to walk with people, the, the, the grace to forgive people, the grace, come on, not to judge people. This idea of patience, come on, is a beautiful gift to you. And it's a gift to me that when we walk in patience, watch this, or when we run with patience, it means that I'm going to keep running my race and it doesn't matter. Listen to me, what happens on either side of me? I'm going to keep running the race that God has set before me, that God has placed before me. And I'm going to do my best, what, to honor God and to love people, to love God and honor people. I'm going to walk in honor and love and respect and character and integrity towards people. 
He says, run this thing, run this race, but run this race with patience. In other words, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. This is not an overnight thing. Come on, this is a marathon where we've got to commit, come on, to run with him every day. We've got to commit to be consistent in our character and walk up right before the Lord. He said, run with patience the race that is set before us. So not only, watch this, do you have to remember and look back to those who have gone before you and created a testimony, not only do we have to shake off the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us or strip it off, but we've got to, listen, run with patience the race that is set before us. We've got to be mindful of what God has created us to do. It's not about Johnny, Sally, or Sue. Come on, it's about what God has created you to do, and you've got a race to run you've got a call to fulfill you've got a ministry to do and you've got to do that with patience because the next thing he says watch this is that we've got to focus on Jesus See, a lot of times what happens is why we lose our patience, why we lose our cool, why we split our wig or flip our wig, come on, is because we take our eyes off the prize. We take our eyes off of Christ Jesus and we put our eyes on people and people are funny. <laughs> Look at what he says in verse 2, looking away from all that distracts us. So we need to watch this. As we are running our race with patience, we need to keep our eyes on Christ. We need to lift our eyes, uh, according to Psalms, to the hill from whence cometh our help. All of our help, Psalms 121, tells us that comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And if that is true, I've got to look away from those things that distract me. I've got to look away if I'm going to be unstopped. I've got to look away from those things that will cause my eyes to wonder. I've got to look away from those things that will cause my heart to wonder. I've got to make sure that I've got a covenant with my eyes, that I'm focused on the things of God. Not only do I have to run my race. Not only do I have to strip off this stuff that is heavy on me, but watch this. I've got to make sure that I'm looking away from that which distracts. I've got to look away from those things that mess me up. And look at what it says here. I've got to focus my eyes on Jesus. That, that I, could, I could preach here all day. Come on, because when I look at Christ Jesus, I see the model of a man. I see the model, come on, of the Bible calls him Emmanuel, who is what? God with us. I've got to focus on Jesus. He is the standard. He is the example. Come on. He told um, Philip, when you have seen me, come on, you have seen the Father in John chapter 14. And so if that is true, then I've got to keep my eyes on Christ. I've got to make sure that my focus is on him, that for all that I do, I do as unto the Lord. Well, I, I, I focus on Christ Jesus, who is, listen, the author and finisher of my faith. I told you last week out of Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 3, that God has given every man, watch this, uh, and woman and child, a measure of faith. That before you were ever born, come on, God had already written, come on, the book of your life according to Psalms 139. And then he measured in the faith, come on, that you need. And I love that the apostle refers to Jesus now as the author, which means the one who writes it. Come on, but he doesn't write it and get halfway through the book and stop. He writes it and he finishes it. That means he completes it. That means he perfects it. In other words, he's given you a perfecting faith inside of you. Not only an unstoppable faith, but a perfecting faith. That means that you can complete, come on, what he gave you to do. No matter what kind of trouble or issues come up in your life, in you, come on, is enough faith for you to be able to complete the journey. He says, I'm not just the author. I didn't just write the book but I've made your faith complete and it's your job and my job come on to get that word and add that word so that my faith come on begins to grow come on and become complete because he's finished the work now our job is to get out here and get that word and grab that word come on and then add faith to the word that God has already planted in or is planting in our heart and what happens he says he is the author and finisher or perfecter 
measure of your faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity. It is in Christ Jesus, come on, that our faith is made perfect. It is in Christ Jesus, come on, that our faith is made mature. It is in Christ Jesus that we grow and become. It is in Christ Jesus. In him we live and we move and we have our being. He is our all in all. He is our beginning and the end, the author and finisher of our faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are unstoppable in Christ Jesus. There's nothing that can destroy you and nothing that can take you out. He says he is the author. He says we got to focus on Jesus. Why? Because when I begin to focus on Jesus, I begin to see the love of God. When I begin to focus on Jesus, I begin to see what it looks like to walk in grace and mercy. When I begin to look in Jesus, I begin, the Bible tells us in John chapter 1, that we have beheld him full of grace and full of truth. That, that this word that became flesh now is full of grace and full of truth. And when you see the two of them into working together, manifested in Christ Jesus, walking the earth for humanity, it does something to you. That's why you can't look to the left or to the right you've got to focus on Jesus because he is the standard he is God with us and he is the author and finisher of our faith the, the one who brings our faith to maturity and look at what it says who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God are y'all reading the book with me look at what it says it says you need to focus on him because when you look at him come on you see grace and truth you see mercy and love you see obedience come on to God you see this man of God who was all God and all man he was Theo and he was Anthropos Theoanthropos, all in one, and he represents, come on, my broken humanity in my sin, come on, but the love of God through divinity living in a broken man like me, just like he was all God and all man, guess what, I'm a broken man who has God inside of me, the fullness of the Godhead lives in my heart, and this is what he's saying, that when you look at Jesus, come on, you see humanity, but you also see divinity, it is the parallel reality of humanity humanity living in this earth in this sin cursed world we got to lift our eyes from this world and lift our eyes to our king who is Christ come on who lives in us who indwells us by his spirit it's a beautiful beautiful thing when I look to him come on I can see forgiveness when I look to him I can see love when I focus on him I can see grace when I focus on him I can see commitment when I focus on him I can see obedience when I focus on him come on I can see an unseen unstoppable man of God who was God himself who came down here to the earth. See, you're unstoppable not because you're so great, but because the God that lives in you is great. Come on. He's the one who they thought they could stop him with the grave. Come on. But the Bible says come on, that the grave couldn't hold him. And in other words, you got to understand who you're dealing with, who's living in you, who is your God. He says, stop looking at mankind. Lift your eyes to Jesus. And when you look upon him, come on, you see the ability and the capacity and the strength and the mercy and the love of God all wrapped up in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful God we serve. He says, looking unto Jesus, who is what the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Watch this. If he can endure his cross, we've got to pick up our cross and endure the cross as well. We've got to, he said, if you're going to follow after me, you've got to pick up your cross. In other words, you've got to live sacrificially. In other words, you've got to make sure, come on, that you know who you serve and whom you serve. You've you got to know who you belong to, come on, and who is your God. He said, he said before him, endured the cross, disregarding the shame set down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. In other words, he could have stopped on the cross. Come on. He could have stopped in the grave, but the Bible says that he got up on the third day with what? All power in his hand. And he said, don't look to man, look to Jesus, the one who conquered death, the one who got up from the grave. And so now we have to be mindful, come on, that we are what? Focused on Jesus. Everybody else is wonderful, but we got to focus on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of 
our faith. Uh huh. And then it says, watch this in verse 3, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now, I'm, 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 about, I'm about done here, but I want you to know that not, not, not only do we have to do the things that were spoken about, we have to remember, watch this, uh, you know, those that have gone before us. We've got to shake off the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. We've got to run with patience. Come on, the race that is set before us and we've got to focus on Jesus. But lastly, he says, and I'm just in verse three. Uh, lastly, he says, we got to consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself and compare it with your stuff so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Man, this blessed my whole life. As I was reading, I'm thinking, are you saying, Lord, that if I consider Jesus and I compare all that he went through, enduring the cross, despising the shame, come on, the, hostil the hostility that he had to deal with with sinners, come on, if I can consider all he went through for me, come on, he did it for the joy that was set before him. Oh, yeah, let me tell you who the joy is. We are the joy. Yes, sir, we are the joy. The, those who are the redeemed of the world, the fact that he paid the penalty for sin, the fact that he finished the work that he and his father had planned before the foundation of the world every time come on a child of God who was lost is found there is joy in heaven come on why because I have found my way home for the joy that was set before him they said listen just consider Paul says just consider and meditate on him who endured it all for you and what we need to learn how to do first off is consider that means to think upon and and to meditate upon right to be mindful of to rehearse what he's done in other words words, if I'm going to be unstoppable, I got to consider Jesus. I, I got to not only focus on him, but I got to meditate on him. I got to meditate. I got to think on him day in and day out. I got to walk with him and talk with him. Uh, come on and, and, and remind myself that I am his own, that I'm a child of God, bought with a price. My life don't even belong to me no more. Come on. I am his and he is mine and we are one in the kingdom of God. Like he and the father are one, so he and I are one. We are united united in spirit. He says just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. I like Psalms chapter 1 uh -huh, verse 1. It says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scorners, but his delight what, is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he what? Meditate, or habitually meditates day and night. In other words, that, that, that a blessed man, a blessed man knows that he is called, come on, but that he must meditate on the word. Well, who is the word? John 1 and 1. In the beginning, come on, was the Logos word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God talking about God himself who came down in verse 14 in flesh form and so we've got to learn how to focus on the word of God we've got to learn how to focus on our Christ we've got to learn how to focus on the written and spoken word we've got to learn how to meditate on that because as we meditate on that thing come on as we meditate on that thing, the Bible says in verse 2 of uh, Psalms, the first chapter, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he do what? He meditates day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, and uh, by the rivers of water. In other words, uh, that, that, that tree is going to be fed by the nutrients of the river. Come on, it'll be living water that feeds the, the man of God who learns how to meditate on the word and meditate on our Christ and meditate on our God. Uh, uh, look what he tells Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read on it, read it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. What he say? You got to meditate on that word. You got to not let it depart out of your mouth. You've got to declare it. You've got to decree it. You've got to speak it. You've got to believe it. You've got to add faith to it. I'm talking about the word of God. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the manifest written word of God. Come on, that comes from our Christ. 
We, we, we got to understand, watch this, that we've got to be make sure that we meditate, that we consider, he says, that we consider, that we consider and meditate on him who endured it, talking about Christ Jesus, but I'm also talking about the manifestation of Christ Jesus, where? In the word of God. I want you to know today that you are, according to the word of God, unstoppable. Let, let, me, let me rehearse it for you. You got to remember to look at those who have gone before us who make such a greater cloud of witnesses. You got to remember to shake off that weight, that sin. You got to check yourself, as the young folks say, before you wreck yourself. There is sin that easily entangles you, entangles us, and there is sin that we can fall into, slide into, and be caught up in and get entangled. You gotta run with patience the race that is set before you. Don't lose your cool. God's got a plan for your life. And it may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Watch this, and then we gotta focus on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And then we have to consider, we have to consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility. Today, I want to encourage you to know that you are unstoppable. With God's help, there's nothing that you can't accomplish. This church, 116 years, we've gone through every move, every challenge, every issue, every split, every attack, every attempt. But remember that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Listen, you might be out there today and you may be lost. You may have lost your way. You may be disconnected from the Lord. I want to offer you a wonderful opportunity, that opportunity to be saved. Look at what he says here, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. God gave you enough save, uh, faith to be saved and all you've got to do is place that faith in Christ Jesus. All, all you've got to do is open your heart, open your life, recognize that you've sinned and fallen from God, and you can be brought back into the fold. You can become a child of God again. If you're out there, God's speaking to your heart, I want you to pray a simple prayer with me. Come on, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, come on, repeat this prayer. Dear Lord, come into my heart. Save me. Heal me. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. And Lord, I want to be saved. I want to walk with you. Forgive me, Lord. I've done some horrible things. Forgive me of my sin. I trust Jesus as my Lord. And for that today, God, I want to be saved. Thank you, Father, for coming in and forgiving me and giving me a born-again experience. I honor you and I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the name of the Lord. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to uh, make sure you contact us. We want to disciple you. We want to walk you through um, a process where you can uh, mature in your faith, connect with your new church family, connect with the kingdom of God. We want you to have understanding. And so we're believing God for a great opportunity to connect with you up through this process. You can text or you can, there'll be information on the screen. We just want to know who you are. Want to make sure we're together. Hey, listen, um, I know many of you have received um, communication that we will be coming back to church on the 27th of the month, um, but we have decided not to do that um, due to some circumstances, uh, some issues with COVID, um, and we wanted to make sure that um, I communicated to you directly so you're aware that we are um, not going to be coming back on the 27th, but weather permitting, we will be having an outdoor service to celebrate our anniversary right here at the Greater Shiloh Church of Easton, Pennsylvania, uh, 403 Pastor Fred Davis Street. Listen, God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Until next time, we'll see you soon. God bless.